Howdy. So it's autumn here at the cabin, and uh, after the popularity of my uh, the $3,500 uh, small cabin video, I figured maybe I'd do one on the, uh, the pole barn. And I'm going to start out by saying, um, if you're interested in this, there, I have a whole build series, and I'll link to that um, in the comments and um, in, a, in a link on the video. And that build series covers from uh, when we cleared the lot, put the posts in, uh, built the main barn, and then built the addition on the back. Um, I'm going to call this the $4,500 pole barn project because I'm not very creative. Uh, $4,500 was about the budget for the main barn, uh, not the addition. The addition was about another $1,000. Uh, steel had gone up at the time and it cost more. Uh, for the roofing then uh, when we bought this part of the roofing. So first we're going to do an over uh, walk around here. Uh, the main barn is 20 by 30 and has three bays. We've always planned on putting garage doors in the front. Never have. I don't know if we ever will. But uh, it's on the plans. We use the barn for storing tractors, tractor parts, uh, ETVs, and uh, building supplies. I have probably enough windows up in the loft here to build another barn, or build another cabin. Let me go to the back here, and you can get a sense of the scale of the roof involved. far enough away. There's the back half of the roof and when I say $4,500 like I said it's up to the main portion of the barn right in the middle of the frame now. That addition on the back was about a thousand bucks of materials extra. Um, yeah and that was the roofing ended up probably being half of that for the back because the price of the steel went up. Um, over the course from the year we built the main barn. And we built the addition for a couple of reasons, for storage of equipment like the finished mower, chippers back there. We also did it so that we could uh, put some firewood. And after the first winter, there was snow load. We get significant amounts of snow where we are. And the, uh, the snow is sitting right up against the back of the building and we didn't like that. So this moves the snow away from the building um, yeah, we, like I said, we get a significant amount of snow, so this has to be able to support four feet of snow, minimum, uh, to get through a winter here. And we routinely have four feet of snow on this barn. Um, and it hasn't fallen over and it stayed square since we built it, so. And we get the, 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 the basic construction, uh, it's a pole barn. Uh, we removed the trees, it looked a lot like this area over here when we started. We removed all the trees, sunk four by six posts, and uh, and built the barn around that. The siding is uh, Amish cut, board and batten, and uh, yeah, by going Amish, we were able to save a significant amount of money. If we had to, if you had to go out and buy wood from Home Depot to do the siding, it would be really expensive. We probably would do vinyl or something, which wouldn't look as nice, but it would be a heck of a lot cheaper. So go up inside and it'll be a little bit dark and I'll see what I can do. Okay so we'll start on the first floor here and uh, yeah, because of our snow load I put in a lot of bracing on this barn. Um, there's bracing from the posts to support beams. Uh, there's bracing on the second floor on all the roof uprights. Uh, when we built it, it just seemed like every place I could put a 45 degree angle piece of wood in, I put a piece of wood in. And uh, yeah, I'm not a structural engineer, but I know that if you do, if you add cross bracing, it makes things significantly stronger. Um, and seeing as it's not plywood clad, we couldn't rely on the plywood to provide any any strength. So you can see here, you know, the main structure is. Uh, 4x6 posts, there are what, uh, 4, 8, 12, 4x, 
or a four by six posts that support the building and those support two by ten uh, cross braces that run from the front to the back there, there's four of them, two on each side uh, it, it, we can't get 20 foot runs from the Amish here, they don't make them so uh, they're 10 foot runs each bay is 10 feet um, and 10 feet wide, 10 feet deep to the post and then 10 feet further back here so yeah they a lot of it's what we can get from the Amish just a pressure treated uh, 4 by 6 we got from Home Depot and everything uh, miscellaneous stuff here and there with stuff we had lying around so sometimes you'll see like the the cross pieces or dimensional lumber we got from Home Depot for other projects and had so we're always looking to reuse uh, what what we have around here. Uh, the the roof support system uh, goes from the back wall and then about two feet behind that main support we have uprights. You can just see the bottom and I'll change the camera settings in a minute so you can see more of the loft when we get up there. But the, uh, the weight is cantilevered back and there are three 2x4s that support uh, a main beam that runs down the middle of the roof. Um, those are lagged in place with uh, the ledge mates. Uh, I can't really think they're called, but they're more expensive than lag bolts. We have uh, two of those in each one. And then on top of each support piece, we have a block that's screwed uh, and nailed into those three uh, 2x4s so the weight has something to support it. We did the same thing down below um, with the main supports have a block underneath them on, with ledge mates uh, lagging them into the 4x6s. So we have a block of 2x4 that is screwed and nailed into the 4x6 just to provide extra security and we did that everywhere. Um, all the posts have that. Like I said this barn has been up for four or five years now and last winter in particular we had quite a bit of snow uh, yeah, we came down in the spring and there was four feet on this roof and it's still structurally sound you know, knock on lots of wood here um, and it's holding it's holding well um, the loft area is for storage and we have up there uh, about a six foot height to the peak but there's a ridge beam that supports the top of the roof and that you know, brings down the height. If I had to do it again, I would have increased the height of the second floor so I don't have to duck. It wouldn't have cost significantly more and would have made it a lot more convenient. Um, and maybe someday if I ever feel like it, <laughs> I'll tear the roof off and, and raise it. Um, you can tell how excited I am to, at the prospect of it. I'm just gonna scan around here so you can see the framing that's involved. Uh, I know when I built it, I had a couple people comment on some of the build videos that they had seen barns like this go over in the wind. And uh, you know, based on our snow and wind that we get here, which we get very, a great deal of wind, um, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, the upstairs loft is floored with five quarter inch uh, white pine, not hemlock. The framing is all hemlock. Uh, the white pine is lighter and supports what we need. Um, all the floor joists are uh, two by eights, I think. And if you go back to my build videos, I will it would be more correct. But I think they're two by eights. Uh, so we use the same uh, like two by tens on the uh, on the roof. So I'm going to switch my camera settings so you can get more light up there. Okay, so I'm going to go up the ladder we have, and hopefully not fall, because I'm recording while I'm doing it. And this is the old wooden ladder I found on the side of the road. I'm always looking for stuff I can dumpster dive. And it's pretty dark up here. Um, let me see if I can use my cell phone as a light. But from up here, you can see this main ridge beam that supports the center weight of the roof. And that's, like I said, supported by three 2x4s. And it has uh, cross beams going for lateral, so 
I go at this way, you can see them. To keep it from shifting. And I'm going to go up top, and I'm going to have to turn my camera off in order to do that. Get over the top of this ladder and not hit my head on this ridge beam. Or this center beam here. But while I'm here, I'll scan over this way. And it's open to the outside. There used to be a plate on the end. When we extended the barn in the back, we removed that rear plate. Uh, and tied those rear roof rafters into the main building. Yeah, you can also see the 2x4s that come upright in between. Uh, we use those as hurricane strapping. We did that on the uh, bottom of the roof and the middle of the roof. Um, we didn't do it on the top of the roof. Just on the bottom, um, on the front and the back. Just to keep it from uh, having wind lift the roof off. So, like I said, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll be right back. Okay, so here you can see the uh, second floor. I'm using my cell phone as a light. Sorry, it's not that great. But uh, it's, uh, what about, it's a 10 by 30 storage area. Um, we could bring the flooring back to the post right in the middle here, but we never have. We don't really need more storage. Uh, we're planning on sooner or later putting a door in the end to make it easier to load and unload things and to use it for hunting out of. Uh, if you, we see a lot of deer right past this barn and it would be nice to uh, just sit in here if it's raining out and hunt from the upstairs. You can see that uh, I have building material for other projects that we haven't done. There's windows and it's every time someone's giving away windows for free we take them we don't have a need for them now but windows are expensive when you're building a building it's one of the most expensive parts so we have windows all over the place up here we have some insulation over here um, toboggan but uh, the good view of the framing on this side you can see we have twin uh, ridge beams supported by four by sixes and these don't go to the ground uh, they're they're floating on the uh, two two by tens that support the second floor, and I have cross braces as you can see on the end there that uh, that hold everything, that hold everything square. And then in between each one, there's one right up next to the camera here. You can see I have a 45 degree brace uh, holding these beams square to the building and keeping them from racking. I said anytime I could put in a brace. I added it, and uh, and then I also, like I said, lagged. There's a hurricane strapping up close right there in the middle. Uh, I didn't. No, I did add hurricane strapping. It's been a while since I built this, so the ups, upper ones. Kind of hard for me to see right there. You can see one in the in the rafter. So we have hurricane strapping there as well. Uh, we have lateral bracing on the front, just like we did um, everywhere else. And these also do not go, the posts that support this wall do not go to the ground. Uh, they, they float. You can see, if I go over here, behind that window, that is the top of one of the uh, main be, uh, supports, uh, poles that go down into the ground. So getting ones that were longer would have been a pain to move and expensive, so I'm all about cheap. Um, like so we have material here for all kinds of projects. We have these we found these uh big cardboard tubes. We figured we could use it for concrete making something or other to fill I don't know. Toss them up here. If they don't get used in a couple decades, maybe I'll burn them. But as I said my other video was really popular, uh the the, the thirty five hundred dollar cabin video. And I figured I would do one here for people who didn't see the original build series. My channel didn't have as many subscribers back then, and uh, you could go back and see it from start to finish. Um, if you're building a pole barn um, or a cabin, I mean, it wouldn't be a huge stretch, stretch. to turn this basic design into a cabin. Uh, you could make you know, the cabin 10 by 20, 20 by 20, 30 by 20. It's it's a expandable design. Uh, you could just, you know, based on the bay system here, you know, if you break it at even, or you could do it at 12s. We did it at 10s because that's what the Amish uh, lumber was conveniently available at. Um, yeah, if I was building a cabin, 
unless you wanted this as a sleeping loft up here, uh, I would raise the height of the ceiling. Um, I'm standing upright, but my head is in between two rafters right now. So, yeah, it, uh, but it's a, a good design for a cabin. Um, I've had a couple of people contact me about doing something similar, um, but I've never seen any videos from any of them. So I'm not sure if they were just dreaming or if they, you know, went ahead and did it and, you know, aren't YouTube, you know, YouTubers and recording things. Um, I try to record everything down here and, uh, you know, it seems to help people out sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I figured I'd, uh, share this. It's been a lot of light content because of family stuff going on and, uh, I'm positive if there are people who are looking for a simple design to build a cabin and if you don't mind doing a pole style, um, you know, sinking the post in the ground, this is a great design. Um, our other cabins all float on the ground. Um, I either uh, support them with posts that are not tied into the building or have the buildings float on like elephant feet and you know, that's how I usually build the buildings. Pole barn, you sink it in the ground uh, here two feet because we have a hard clay layer down two feet. Normally up here you would do three feet but it's the, the hard clay layer is just about impossible to dig through without heavy equipment. So, yeah, I think I'll, I'll end it there. And if you have questions, you know, fire them off. Uh, I might have covered them in one of my build series videos. And if I remember which one, I will, uh, I'll link to it uh, in the response. Um, and like I said, I will put a, uh, a link to that whole ser playlist uh, as a res as, uh, a, in the description below. So, until next time. Thanks for watching.